One of the most frequent questions I get asked is how I afford to travel to all these places. I have got to 23 states in Nigeria out of 36. I hope to get to more states in Nigeria and definitely probably revisit some that I have been to to explore new places. So I'm going to be sharing with you my tips and tricks on how I afford to travel to all these places and have an amazing time on the shoestring budget. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of BK Says. I am Blessing Kure and you're welcome. Well, on this episode of BK Says, I'm going to be giving you a broke person's guide to traveling in 2020. One of the most frequent questions I get asked when people meet me in person or get to send me DMs is how I afford to travel so much. Yes, I love to see new places. Yes, I love to travel. And even before I started to document my travels on YouTube, I used to travel a lot. Growing up as a child, my hobby was traveling. My hobby is still traveling and seeing new places and conversing with people which is pretty weird for some people now because you can't relate to why anybody would like to relate more to people but those are one of the things that have a place in my heart so let's travel <laughs> yes i got that done just for this event <laughs> okay so a broke person's guide to traveling in 2020 by broke i do not mean on i do not mean like level zero you probably have some money but not that much money just small money yeah i have written down a few pointers as regards questions i asked on twitter i did put out a tweet saying what would you like to know about traveling as a book person in 2020 and then people had issues about accommodation logistical nightmares um how i decide to pick where to eat because some people are particular about meals and um, well, accommodation stood out most times on instagram on twitter and other social media platforms i posted out and asked people i was conversing with maybe a few friends of mine they always wanted to know about food and accommodation i am going to be taking pointers from my trusted planner yes one of the first things you would need is a planner if you plan on traveling um, in 2020. The planner is not necessarily to all your dream places because you can have a scrapbook for that. The planner is for you to have an idea of what you want to do because if you're traveling, you have to have a plan. That's the first thing. You have to have a plan. You can't just say, oh, let's travel. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not making rain money, which if this video, you're watching this video, so no offense, but like you would need to have a budget. So you need to outline all the things you need and all the places you want to see. One thing I usually do is Put on Google things to do in the states. So, say for instance, I've been to 13 states this year, and um, every time I'll just put things to do in this particular state. So some of, some other states, I probably have had conversations with people that have pricked my interest cells out. I've noted it down. That kind of influences your accommodation and all the other places you want to visit. In the side fact that some people think it takes a lot of money for you to travel, I would want to debunk that because you just need sometimes an average amount of money. Traveling is not as expensive as you think and i'm going to say traveling for exploration because if you want to travel for lavish that vacation that vacation that lounging it's going to cost you if you want to go and be a baller it's going to cost you a lot of money but if you're trying to travel just within the confines of your finances um it could be really affordable so the top ranking question was transportation I'm going to start with transportation because definitely accommodation comes after transportation. So transportation, if you're trying to travel as a good person, you may want to go by less expensive means of transportation, which may be the least expensive would probably be trains and um, buses or cars as opposed to flights. Flights are comfortable, they're beautiful, they're amazing and they're just lavish. But as a road person trying to explore more, you would want to consider road. But the upside of traveling by road is that you get to see a lot of places. Say for instance, I'm going to Owere from Kaduna State. I get to see, I get to pass Abuja, I get to pass Kogi, I go through Dokoja Edo, you go through Benin, you go through Enugu, you go through, uh, oh, off the top of my head, the states are just skipping. Benue, you pass through Benue. And at the end of the day, I've probably seen like seven states just on my way to Owere, as opposed to just flying and seeing the clouds of all these places. So yes, there's an upside to traveling by road. You may want to consider road transportation. Somebody in my on Twitter clearly said, address logistical nightmares. Traveling by road can be a nightmare sometimes to be fair. I avoid traveling at night because I would like to see I love to see and experience the feel of wherever I'm going to or wherever leads to where I'm going to because sometimes it's about the journey for me. So um, You would want to you want to travel by day 
for I think the longest I've traveled by road is 14 hours and it was because I followed a crappy road transportation taking a suggestion from someone that didn't particularly pan out well my mouth my life my chest I was really I was panicking and my heart was in my lungs I couldn't even, my mouth I couldn't I couldn't sleep or take a nap I was just like where are we now Google map please show me oh great Google map one thing you're going to become best friends with is Google map all the reviews people have written have helped me so I try as much as possible to write very honest reviews about the places I've been to so transportation you can follow night buses buses are followed and this is not an advert although they would want to consider partnering with me and paying for advertisements so wink wink I use God is good motives because it's super comfortable it's like the uh, I think they're trying to go for the exotic feel of traveling by air but on road so they have air conditioning, their road, they have speed limits, their drivers are super professional and they have an online presence. I usually travel or patronize transport companies that have an online presence because you can lay your complaints and the whole internet space helps you fight your battle. So in case you have any complaints, they are more concerned about their human relations as opposed to and customer service as opposed to just any car you take on the road. Do not take a roadside car for security reasons, I beg you. I use God's good motives on maybe like 70% of my travels and I use the state transportation. Say when I went to Bauchi, I use I used the Yankari Transport Company, which is the one owned the Yankari Reserve is in Bauchi State, so they have a transport company. That's registered. It helps you just have it's accountable. You could know the driver, the plate number. If you want, you can snap it for security and send it to your um, family members, which is something that is pretty important as well. I've dwelled so much on transportation because I think it's a huge, huge issue. And for moving around town, um, oh, this is not an advert, but I use, I used to use Uber. Um, then I switched to Taxify. Taxify sold out and became Bolt. So I use Bolt, mostly use Bolt. But when I came back to the north, I came back to Kaduna State, there was no Bolt and I was heartbroken. Then came the Brave OK. Um, they have O Trike in Kaduna State and O Car recently. Oh my god, I use Kekes all the time. And O Trike, I would say, is an amazing one to try out. If O Trike is listening, y'all would want to come on board, pay for one of my trips, and then I get to like or trike around the town for one of those tour thingies I've been thinking of doing in Kaduna State, so that's not a bad idea. I don't know. These major ones I called are available in almost all states in the country, major cities that you would want to visit. And the last means of transportation I forgot to mention because I just know that there are train that leads from the north to Lagos and then from Lagos, to, from Abuja to Kaduna, that's the most active train route in Nigeria currently and it's buzzing. There are lots of videos on YouTube about it. The first thing you want to know about accommodation while traveling as a group person in Nigeria or in any other part of the world is leveraging on family and friends. A lot of us have to say, oh, I'm an island, I don't need to talk to this person, blah, 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 blah. Mm. If you're trying to be broke and travel, you may need to call up some of your old friends to um, cushion your accommodation. This doesn't mean you will live in their house. Of course, it may be rent-free because they are family and friends. That's something you want to leverage on. These are genuine communications that you would want to create. Create bonds and connections that go beyond uh, monetary gains and selfish interests. Like some people you've met before, would you be able to contact them again if you needed anything? If you want to stay with people, please don't just, don't just barge in on them give them prior notice. I feel like it's really important to say this because a lot of us don't have people staying or squatting etiquettes. When you wake up in the morning, help them with house chores. It kind of helps your reputation because if you're a terrible person to leave with, somebody may tell somebody, they're like, oh, Blessing says she's coming to crash at my place. I'm like, oh, Blessing that wakes up and just, she wakes up really late, she leaves the house dirty, she doesn't help with anything and she just eats all your food. That gives you a bad review. Life is full of reviews, even as a person and not necessarily an organization. So you would want to be helpful around the house. Also, um, you would want to maybe go with something. Many cultures in Nigeria, very hospitable cultures in Nigeria, I believe you should go with a little token, something. Even if it's just really small that says, oh, thank you for having me. Do not overstay your welcome. If you said I'm staying three days, please stay three days or less. Do not say three days and turn it to a month because you just become one of those people that refuse to go. And once they start asking, oh, so when did you say you're leaving? Once did you say you're leaving? Like three times. I think you should take the hint. Yeah. So I use Google ratings a lot. I use reviews from people a lot. I go into the feedbacks. The feedbacks from, I check feedback, most recent feedbacks, really old feedbacks. And um, they just help me weigh up. Mostly I have a price rate range of how much I want to spend in, at heart. So I keep that at heart. But I'm going to tell you, this is the best thing you probably know. Accommodation as a broke person trying to travel can be tricky. Sometimes the least decent place you could get, maybe 10,000 naira, maybe for a week's trip, that's seven days, that's about 70,000 naira minus other expenses. That may be a lot. So I just try as much as possible to find a decent place for a good price.
on the issue of food you all know i love food if you follow my videos i think my main concentration whenever i go to a new place is to check out their food and to check out their markets i usually check up um what these states have are known for anybody i know is okba and um Nkwabi and all these other foods and Ofaku. Ofaku became my favorite meal. I mean, I made a Ofaku just the other day and shout out to my evil people. So, so um, you want to know the food that is peculiar there. If you're not so adventurous with food, then you would like to consider neutral food places. Say, for instance, you're coming, you're, you're over from the west and you're going to the, to the east. It's amazing to know that there are places where you can eat your indigenous delicacies. There was this Amala woman from NYC camp that was in Owewe. She had her place was around Ikenebu and I think all Yorubas or Westerners or Yoruba lovers around the state trooped in to come and eat Ha'amalan, Egiri and Iwebu. If a name of a place pops up up to three times, that place is probably good. That's my trick. If a name of a place, if a restaurant pops up three times with good reviews, it's probably good and it's worth to try. Don't go checking for the most exo exotic thing on the menu. First, please eat the basic thing that you can understand. So you know that you can gauge their spicing, their the taste, if it's something you, you can endure or if it's something you can't. One of the people I ask for restaurant recommendations with people in transport. Drivers, bike people, keke people, they know all the places. I know, I, just, I do have honest conversations with these people and they're really, really remarkable. People don't stop to say hello, but so when you when you take a pause and you're like, oh, hello, um, let's say I'm in the East and I'm like, they won't know if I'm in the West and I say, Caro, and I try to ask and then, oh, I'm, I'm not, I'm like, but can you in a Neman gashi gashi gashi. Just a few days ago, I wanted to get masa and the place I know was closed. So I, I was in a keke and I just met him, I was like, yo, where can I get the best masa? I said, I know this woman's place. I took my the masa was nice 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 so um sometimes they know the place and you can tell them the grade of what you want what you want to eat so it doesn't mean you're eating off bookers by the roadside sometimes you say that oh in an email they did it just an average place something i'm looking for a place that is average cost they will take you there if you're looking for a high-end place they know all the places to surprise you they are the plugs for everything so definitely you could ask around for that one and if you um have family and friends that that wouldn't be a problem because they would definitely show you around town if you have allergies please bear it in mind have your medication have a fluid plan one major advice i'll give you is to have a fluid plan when i started traveling um officially i would have this thing i wanted to do in my mind and when i got to the states plans may change and i would be so angry i wouldn't um enjoy the rest of the trip i'll just be I never keep my faith that way, but um, I wouldn't be as excited as I was at the beginning of the trip because my plan, my ideal plan didn't happen. If you're planning to travel for exploration, please have a free plan and learn to see the beauty in everything. Take it all in. You're there already. You've spent money getting to this place already. You might as well just enjoy it. For Last but not the least, expenditure. It's good to have a book where you write out your plans physically because sometimes you forget to check your phone but i think if you write it there's something about writing i'm old school so i love to write something about writing that just makes it stick in your head so have your plans written with the cost implication of every plan if you want to go swimming <laughs> girl or boy write the price of that swim and miscellaneous oh i probably will buy airtime i'll buy data i'll buy transportation i may have to buy a change of clothes i want to go to the market and they see this thing i want to buy write it all out and make sure you narrow your plan to fit into what your finances are at that particular point in time this is not an advert again it's piggy vest i got piggy vest is a piggy bank app or colo asusu i used to have asusu growing up i have an asusu as an adult and i have an internet asusu that's the piggy vest where you save your money online it connects straight to your account and all those things so it's relatively safe i've used it for since january 2019 till this point and i'm still using it so if it's something you're willing to try you could check piggy vest to help you save pending when your travel date is so you can set all your savings to the point in time when you want to travel and then you get the money just before you travel so you can afford to have cash when you're traveling don't go around traveling once obio money stacking the paper on your body because um traveling especially by road isn't so can be um, daunting or can can have insecurities and we do not pray that you have an incident of course but 
just in case you hide, you would love to learn to hide money in some secret places. I'm not going to tell you my secret places of hiding money, but I would want you to know that you should get secret places for money yourself. Uh, for foreigners watching this, yes, you can travel to Nigeria cashless. Have some cash on your hand, of course, change before you come, but have money in your accounts. Maybe a Naira account if you have somebody that's taking you around, so if you could spend that easily, you could easily use the POS or use a cash stand or just transfer. Money. Sometimes, if I'm trying to save money, I don't travel with all my ATM cards. Because, I mean, you may see this beautiful thing and, and you're just like, oh, I don't have money. And then something tells me in your ears, you have that secret ATM. And then you just spend it. When you spend it and you come home and you start thinking, mm, you just be, you have a solemn day feeling bad that you spent money you didn't plan on spending. On the issue of logistical nightmares, I've had a couple of. Uh, uh, terrible travel experiences I tell you I used the night bus just to see how it was and I was scared I looked out the window I was pitch black and I was I was just very restless to be, to be honest so nope nope I just keep on night journeys those are all the tips I could give you for traveling as a broke person in 2020 help save your money if you have any more questions on what you need to know to travel as a broke person in 2020 please drop it in the comment section below and I would love to help you out with that so thank you very much for sticking with me till the end of this video if you're a broke person that has been inspired to travel please tag me on all your travel pictures or videos on Instagram Facebook or Twitter at bless you Kure. and I'll be so pumped to see the places you've explored and the pictures you've taken videos you've made and people you've taken um, you've connected with of course it's a wonderful world and connections are what makes the world go round don't forget to drop a comment in the comment section if this was helpful and give it a thumbs up of course and shout out to the comment of this week